the galaxy of intellectuals, your excellency, invited guests, teachers, and my dear friends, how different is this afternoon? Definitely, it's a beautiful afternoon. Dear audience, you will discover yourself the color of Greenovative Virtual Presentation Competition 2020 Permanent Campus. First of all, I'd like to thank you all for taking your time out of your heavy schedule and making the spectacular evening with your glorious presence. This is Maria. I, along with Najmul, be your host for this event. Thank you so much, Maria. Dear audience, we feel honored to have with us our honorable teachers, judges, program coordinators, club moderators, and every cooperative force behind this event. This Greenovative Virtual Presentation Competition 2020 is an online-based competition, which is organized by Green University Computer Club Permanent Campus for the student of Permanent Campus only. We have got total 63. Our hearty congratulations to all of them. Okay. Winners are selected by jazz panel. Our honorable jazz are Ummi Ruman, Assistant Professor and Campus Director, CSE, Sulaiman Mia, Assistant Professor, CSE, Dr. Muhammad Asadul Jaman, Assistant Professor, Tripoli, Muhammad Asipul Haq, Lecturer, Tripoli, Dr. Muhammad Dilwar Hussain, Assistant Professor, GBS, Rokia Binti Shahid, Assistant Professor, GBS, Rasul Kabir, Assistant Professor, English, Dr. Muhammad Mehdi Hassan, Assistant Professor, Law, and Muhammad Monir Hussain, Sir, Lecturer from Textile. Now, I would like to request our vulnerable teacher, Mrs. Farhan Akhtar Sani, ma'am, moderator, Green University Computer Club, Permanent Campus, to deliver her speech. Uh, thank you, Maria. My dear colleagues, honorable judges, and my beloved students, very good afternoon. During this pandemic period, GUB Permanent Campus uh, has organized this delightful event. We already know that a total 63 students registered to participate in this competition from our six departments. With the help of selection committee, 12 students have been selected for today's session. I do believe that each student will learn something new from this competition. So I am very excited to see their performance and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your wonderful speech. In this final stage of competition, every participant will have 10 minutes, seven minutes for presentation and three minutes for question and answer. During the presentation, you will hear a warning bell in six minutes and your time will be up after second warning bell. Now, we would like to hand over this program to our Honorable Club Moderator, Mrs. Far Farhana Akhtar Saniman. Thank you, Najmul. Now, I would request Saifuddin Khandokar from Tripoli Department to present his topic. Assalamu alaikum, dear audience. I am Saifuddin Khandukar, ID 201-901-005, Department of Tripoli, Green University of Bangladesh. Today, I came here with a part of Sparking Technologies for Electrification, Automation, and Communication Arena to ameliorate 21st century. Here are the part whose name is 
power electronics. Basically, power electronics is the application of solid state electronics to the control and conversion of electric power. Think about your daily activities. We all use power. Take for an example of your morning activities. You turn off your alarm clock, turn on the lights of your rooms, see the messages of your phone, and when you go out, you use vehicle. These all have power. So why, why do we care? Why do we care about power electronics? None of the device can run with a dead battery. All of the device must have power to run. So what exactly power electronics? Electronic power is measured in watts. It calculated multiplying with voltage and current. Power is the amount of energy transferred or converted per unit time. It measured in watts hour. Today, in every houses and industries are connected to the electricity. So the companies are used power in kilowatt per hour. Now, where the power electronics are used? Power electronics are used to support the activity loads like electromotor, speakers, sensors, power conditioning system, solar cells, generator, circuit breakers, and so many on. Here we see some types of power electronic circuit. Diode, uh, sorry, diode rectifiers that uh, converts uh, AC voltage into fixed DC voltage. Then converter. Converter has all, uh, also four types. AC to AC, which name is rectifier. DC to AC, which name is inverter. And other two parts is DC to DC and AC to AC. And the final, uh, static switches. Power devices can be operated as static switches or connectors. It can be AC or DC. So how power we get? Power is not like water. Electricity must have generated from an electric source. Energy is captured from coil, wind, nuclear elements, water, and so on. Energy sources then converted into energy. Finally, electricity is transmitted across the grid power line to the customer. Power distribution. Electric power distribution is the final stage in the delivery of electric power. It carries electricity from the transmission system to individual consumers. Thanks a lot, the honorable judges and teachers and friends to connect with my presentation. And a big thanks to the Greenovative Virtual Presentation Committee who makes this program. Thank you, Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Now I request our next participant, Niamul, uh, Naimul Hassan Rani, to present his topic, please. Thank you, ma'am, for giving me the opportunity to speak in this important discussion. Uh, welcome to my presentation. I am Naimul Hassan Rani. Uh, I'm speaking from the Green University of Bangladesh, Department of Green Business School. My student ID is 2019060006. Uh, I will discuss about the topic uh, COVID-19 and crisis uh, and opportunity for Bangladesh. And now I will discuss uh, COVID-19 and crisis for Bangladesh. Education crisis, economic crisis, job crisis, healthcare crisis. Uh, education crisis. The crisis uh, could also be more threatening for students with special needs around 39,000. After the pandemic, the crisis will not be any easy for the students remaining at school either. Quality of teaching might also fall. Then economic crisis. Uh, now remittance host countries in Europe and Middle East are themselves facing economic slowdown, causing- Naimal. Naimul, please make it in slide, slide for you, please. Okay, ma'am, okay. 
uh, most of them are now returning home to Bangladesh. Uh, then, then, then job crisis. Uh, the number of job seekers in is increasing day by day due to the closure of many private companies for COVID-19. Uh, then healthcare crisis. Uh, healthcare preparation and capacity against the COVID-19 must uh, might explain the pandemic situation in Bangladesh more precisely. Uh, then COVID-19 an opportunity opportunity for Bangladesh, uh, education opportunity, economic opportunity, uh, job opportunity, and uh, healthcare opportunity. Uh, education opportunity. Uh, the effect of the current COVID-19 uh, pandemic on the education system of Bangladesh and its possible solution is the focus of the present study. Economic opportunity. Uh, COVID-19 situation must be uh, entrepreneurial which will create employment for many people and keep the country's economy afloat. Uh, then job opportunity. Working in Bangladesh is not difficult. If you don't have a job, you can uh, find plenty of them in online job portals. And depending on your work, uh, you would need a different work permit from different um, barriers. Uh, healthcare opportunity. Uh, COVID-19 situation, we need the same uh, amount of insights. Uh, if these are successfully obtained, then our healthcare will get the right opportunity. Uh, uh, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Naimul. Uh, dear Just Panel, you can ask any question to Naimul. Uh, Ma'am, may I ask a question? Sure. Okay, uh, Naimul, are you from CSE department? Uh, GBS department, sir. GBS department. Okay. Uh, uh, your presentation is quite simple, but I, I think uh, if you could include some pictures, then it would be more attractive. And my question is, uh, uh, the technological aspects you are, uh, are missing in your presentation. So will you please elaborate, elaborate that how technology can uh, overcome the uh, crisis of COVID-19 and it will ameliorate the situations or improve the situations with the help of technology? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, technology, technological side is the uh, improve. Uh, uh, sorry, sir. I mean, uh, uh, how technology can improve the COVID-19 situation? My point is that. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, Ma'am, we can move on. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you. So, uh, no question for uh, Niamul. So, we can move to our next presenter, Parjana Alamjuma. Please share your screen to present your topic. Good evening. I am Parjana Alamjuma. Welcome to my presentation. My ID is 19291101, Department of Law, Green University of Bangladesh. Okay, at first I start my uh, presentation with a story. Here we can see that uh, here is a girl. Her name is Shopna Rani. Shopna Rani recently got married uh, uh, to a boy. And after her marriage, uh, the boy asked for dowry. And uh, the, that guy also killed her brutally. And, uh, and the main problem is that the boy also did not uh, give her any money, like uh, which is called dower. And after that, uh, they just end up the relationship with dissolution of marriage. And uh, there is a, in this picture, we can see that there is a problem of the custody of the children. Okay, now we'll, I will start my presentation. What is uh, a family court? Uh, it is my topic today. Family court was originally created to be a court of equality convened to decide matters and make orders in relation to family law, such as custody of children, dissolution of marriage, dower, maher, and when plaintiffs come into the court with clean hands and the request was reasonable changes in laws and rules have made this distinction superfluous. Family court ordinance. Family court ordinance uh, is a 1985 uh, promulgated uh, the content selected for the constitution in the ordinance are completed from the Muslim law, Hindu law, civil procedure code, evidence act, dissolution of marriage, 
Act and the Muslim Family Law Ordinance. The ordinance extends to the whole Bangladesh. What is family cases? Family cases are the civil cases, but they generally involve in the issue between the concerning spouses, parents, children, uh, which I just dis uh, described before in my, my story that the topic was uh, with the husband and wife. So family court handles a wide variety of the cases involving domestic matters. The most common issue handled that family courts include so here in this chart, we can see that family cases are the dissolution of marriage, restriction of conjugal relationship, dower, maintenance, guardian or custody of children, protection orders against domestic violence. So uh, what is dissolution of marriage? So dissolution of marriage uh, under the Muslim law are detailed in section 307 and 308. Under Muslim law, this contract may be happen uh, in two parties by the husband at his will or without the intervention of the court. So husband may divorce his, her, his wife and wife also. But uh, in the coming Nama, wife cannot uh, get that opportunity. Uh, but uh, in judicial degree at the suit of husband or wife, the wife cannot divorce herself from her husband without uh, his consent unless such right is given to his wife in the Nikah Nama, this type of talak is called talak -e office. What is restitution of conjugal relationship? So the restriction of conjugal relationship is the husband may sue against the wife for restriction of conjugal life in wife uh, without the lawful causes she is to cohabit with her husband. The suit is maintained or only the legal married wife. Dower. Dower and dowry both are totally different. Dower is a uh, kabin nama and dowry is that money that which by us before marriage uh, and so many things. And dower is a sum of money or other property which is wife entitled to receive from her husband before marriage. Not before marriage, actually she have to uh, obtain it after marriage. Muslim law made it uh, for us for every person uh, that uh, he has to give dower. Maintenance. Maintenance is the nafafa. It is monetary support that a wife, children, parents, and grandchildren can claim as a matter of legal rights. So maintenance can be food, clothing, lodging, medical support, and etc. Whatever her needs. Guardianship or custody of children. In all cases of father, if father is alive, then the natural guardian of the person and the property of his minor child in absence of father, the responsibility goes to mother in case of her absence and grandfather or nearest children, or nearest relationship. Protection orders against domestic violence. Victims of domestic violence can ask for family court to issue protection orders to keep their abuse away. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> So there are many problems of the judges of the family courts. Under the family court ordinance, the 1985 uh, assistant judge uh, is a, have to maintain all the family courts. So uh, in our court, there are so many problems like overpopulation, lengthy process of trial. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> lengthy process of trial, less members of family courts, less number of the judges, lack of the family laws, lack of the expert lawyer, complexity, etc. So family court is important elements to discuss every family matters to solve the family problems. Family courts place an important role in the society. There are many sources are open every day in Bangladesh. Most of the sources are family matters. Thank you, everyone. <coughs> Hello. 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 Okay. Uh, thank you, Farjana. So I request to all participants, please don't uh, share your screen off uh, during the question session. Yeah. You can, you can, uh, hello, please, Arif, share off your screen. Madam, uh, may I ask some question to Farjana Alam Juma? Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Yes, sir. Any question from our judges panel and suggestion uh, can be allowed. Farjana, we can also I... take question from our audience. Uh, my first question is that it said that maintenance should be given to the children. But in case of parents, if any parents claim maintenance to their children, that is to the son, what shall be the status of that? My first question. Yes, maintenance uh, can be for children uh, if they are a minor and uh, they can uh, get the maintenance from their parents. But uh, can a parent claim maintenance to their son or daughter, the present law? Yes, parents can also get maintenance from their daughter or son. 
uh, whenever they retire, the, they, it, this is their right to get the maintenance from their son and children. Thank you. My second question is that you tell that, that this law is guided by uh, uh, to the Muslim and Hindus, but in case of tribal people, what's the status of that? Uh, tribal people uh, follows the Hindu law. Muslim law is different and Hindu law is different and tribal people follow the Hindu law. I think. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I think no more question for her. So I now I am inviting our next presenter, Vishash Dev Kumar, Shomendra Dev. Please, you can continue with your screen. Good day to all. My name is Bishar Shomendra Dev Dipu, studying LLB at Green University of Bangladesh, student ID 20291007. We all know family law is a unique subject that is only deals with the family members rather than other matters likely those related to financial or property. So today my presentation uh, topic is uh, the family court prepared for innovative virtual presentation competition. Bangladesh is a pluralistic society uh, with a, sorry. Bangladesh is a pluralistic society with various religious uh, communities with pluralistic legal system entertaining a parallel jurisdiction with regard to separate personal laws. On the other hand, it has a uniform set of laws which is applicable to all citizens of the state irrespective of their differences, such as criminal justice system, taxation, land loss, etc. On the other hand, personal affairs and family matters of the different religious communities are determined by their separate personal law. Family courts in uh, Bangladesh is um, uh, designed by the specific act named as the Family Court Ordinance 1985. Back in 19, uh, uh, family court is a form where people may seek remedies under their respective uh, uh, personal laws. Back in 1995, an important question came before the court, whether the jurisdiction of a family court is exclusive to the Muslim or it can um, uh, try to all other uh, cases or all other communities. The Family Court Ordinance 1985 does not specifically mention anything about uh, different communities, but Section 5 of the Act only specified uh, the subject matter over which Family Court has jurisdiction. But without clarifying the scope of its applicability on the non-Muslim is, is still unsure. According to the uh, according to this, uh, this act, uh, there are some jurisdiction over some matters mentioned in the Muslim Family Law Ordinance 1960 on, likely dissolution of ma marriage, restitution of conjugal right, door maintenance, guardianship on custody of children. Such type of petty family matters are adjudicated by the family court, are um, named as the court of assistant judge. The aggrieved party may file among uh, the five mentioned matter before the court of assistant judge uh, is a family court by placement a plea. And uh, uh, other party is entitled to file a written statement after considering the pleading. That means plaintiff, plaintiff and the written statement of the defendant ascertain the issue. None of the parties can represent themselves with advocate without court's permission. According to section 10, 13, 14 of the Family Court Ordinance 1985, uh, uh, the court of the first instance, the Family Court tries is best to settle the matter amicably if it is possible between uh, the par parties. If it is not possible to do, uh, do compromise between the parties amicably, the court will proceed in according to evidence of the both parties. Then the court will pronounce a decision or judgment as the Family Court. After pronouncing decision, the agreed party have a chance to appeal against the judgment to the district judge court. Appeal against the decision passed by the affiliate court may go to the higher court division by a form of revision. 
family court deemed to be a civil court and their personal appearance is mandatory. The court shall record what the witness disposed and the memorandum shall be signed and the form of the part of a record the court may on the application on the um, um, uh, on the any of the parties summon or examine such person as to the fact contained in the affidavit. In the conclusion, it is duty of family court to solve family problems, disposing family matters and promote family ties as soon as possible and assist parties with court proceedings. Thank you very much for watching my uh, presentation. Do you have any questions regarding family court? Hello. Hello. Madam. Yes, sir. We can start our question session. Yeah. May I ask question, madam? Yes, yes sir. Uh, dear Sonandro, ask yes, you that whether this is a general law or a special law? It is a general law, sir. It is general law. Yes, sir. Uh, how much pecuniary jurisdiction the judge can exercise in case of family law in, in 1985? Sir, only the, um, um, assistant judge can, um, uh, uh, in um, um, reality, the two lakh, uh, uh, under two lakh, are, uh, can uh, practice or four lakh can uh, uh, practice assistant just and uh, district just can uh, uh, more than four lakh. In case of family law, or in 1985, the. Sorry, sir, I can't hear you. Our audience can ask question. So I think no more questions. So now I am inviting our next presenter, Najmul Hussain, to present his topic, please. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Nazim Hussain from the Department of CAC. Bring the ID 19392031. Today, I would like to present my presentation on emerging technology for the revolution of industry 4.0. The fourth industrial revolution has already begun and we have the chance to be part of it. This will not be like before. It is not about the steam that powered up our factories in the first industrial revolution or the mass production model that dominated the second or even the emerge, emerging computer driven system that dominated the third revolution that we are living today. Industry 4.0 is all about connectivity. It is an opportunity for entering the way that industry responds to the needs of the society. Why cloud computing? To describe cloud computing, we need to compare cloud computing with the other existing, existing system. So if we build a system into on-premises or cloud, what are the pros and cons? Let's have a look. First, if we look at the payment method for the both with the cloud computing, the, the billing model is pay as you go tech, meaning we use less and pay less. And if we use more and we pay, pay less per unit. On the other hand, in on-premises, we cannot expect that. We pay everything upfront here. Eventually there is an additional cost and it never let us dynamically scale in. Second, flexibility. In on-premises, there are lacks of flexibility needed today. If I want to restructure the IT for the new, new age business needed, then the on-premises are not so friendly with it. On the other hand, in the cloud, I can easily undo or restructure the ID for uh, restructured IT for the new age business 
as if needed. Third, maintenance. Maintenance in on-premises is not easy. We need also a dedicated team to maintenance hardware and software, but in the cloud, we need no such dedicated team for the most of the service. They all get managed by the provider. Even if we need to manage them, then the provider gives us a lot of option to manage them through the console, which is a lot, lot easier. Security. In on-premises, we need to admit the fact that their security is poor because because of the investment or uh, because of the investment the provider uh, because of uh, because of the cost involved the procuring uh, the hardware and software to provide data security but in the cloud the security stand are high because of the investment uh, the provider has done to secure the data last collaboration collaboration in on premises if I'm working with a team that is spread across the globe. Working with them as a team is a trade sir. But in the cloud, there are lots of tools and technology put together that make it so easy. Actually, it's fun to collaborate with my team, with my other members of my team. So variation on on-premises and cloud computing. If you have enough money to invest on cloud uh, invest on on premises then you go for on premises system but your business is startup then you should be go for the cloud computing solution what is cloud computing cloud computing is the on demand ability or on demand ability of computer system computer system resource, especially data storage and computing power without direct active management by the users. You can access your data from your desktop, from your laptop, from your tablet, even your computer, if you have an internet connection, whatever you want. So types of cloud computing. Mainly there are two types of cloud computing one service model to deployment model. To understanding a deployment model, I put here uh, some picture as like public buses, own, uh, own car and taxi. First, public cloud. Public cloud is a shareable storage to cloud infrastructure is made available for the general purpose like, as like uh, the uh, public transport system. The public uh, transport system mainly used for general public or general purpose. On the other hand, public cloud. Public cloud uh, mainly organized for the security. The cloud infrastructure is exclusively operated by a single organization. As like, if I have a own car, I can only manage the car without any permission, any restriction. Third, how uh, hybrid cloud? Hybrid cloud, as like if I have a I have an own car, I can manage and I can rent as like taxi. So uh, mainly hybrid model uh, contain the contain the ability of, for uh, public and private cloud computing system. So service model. IAAS meaning infrastructure as a service, cloud-based service pay as you go for the service such as storage, networking and visualization, SAAS, meaning software as a service, software that available by third party over the internet. Third, PAAS, meaning platform as a service, hardware and software tools are available internet available over the internet. So there are uh, some well known uh, service provider, cloud computing service provider, Google uh, Cloud, IBM Cloud, Amazon Web Service, Microsoft Azure and Server Service. 
and uh, that conduct my uh, presentation thank you everyone now question and answering session will open anyone can ask any question assalamu alaikum madam uh, may i ask a question to sir 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 nazmul has presented uh, a very wonderful uh, presentation today in our uh, today's innovative virtual competition so uh, i just only ask some questions to nazmul could you please uh, explain what is the difference between uh, this cloud computing and mobile computing uh, sir actually cloud computing based on uh, some on premises uh, kind of on premises uh, system that uh, already built in a uh, abroad or any kind of on on premises it infrastructure by the investment or the provider but mobile cloud it's actually part of cloud computing that uh, recently uh, make popular uh, as like we use uh, cloud computing uh, but we can remain uh, rename the system as like google doc uh, or uh, google drive okay. microsoft on drive <laughs> You are, you are on track. Thank you, Nazmul. My another question is uh, for you. Uh, I think you already uh, familiar with API, that is application programming interfaces, right? Yes, sir. API. So uh, could you please tell us uh, why API is used in cloud services, in cloud computing, or without using any API, what will be the uh, disadvantages in cloud computing? Uh, so first, uh, first of all, sir, without using api it is hard to do the cloud computing system to manage uh, because uh, in the api system uh, the programmer will write down uh, their code on into them into it but without api system we cannot manage our cloud computing system so easily it is uh, actually tedious work going to do Thank you, Nazmul. Can I ask a question uh, to Nazmul? Sure, sir. Okay, thank you, uh, Nazmul, for your beautiful presentation. And I think we've learned a lot about the advantages of cloud computing. But I would like to ask Nazmul that, uh, according to your studies, what do you think is the biggest uh, disadvantage or obstacle for adopting cloud computing? Uh, sir, in our country, we live in a third world but uh, if we move into cloud computing first of all we need to uh, ensure our data uh, our internet uses ability uh, in the in our country if we move above the uh, above we we can see the net speed or uh, data sharing platform is already grow up so much but in our country it is not popular or even not standard at all it is the main abstraction uh, for the uh, moving cloud computing to the moving cloud computing. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, now we can move to our next presenter, Farjana Afrin Maria. Please continue with your topic. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my innovative virtual presentation competition 2020 PC. Hope everyone is fine at home by the grace of God Almighty in this COVID-19 pandemic. Today, I'm going to talk about emerging technology for the revolution of industry 4.0. From this large topic, I'm going to focus on the cyber security. Before we begin, let me introduce myself and make a clear idea about today's topic. I am Farjan Afrin Maria from Computer Science and Engineering Department. My idea is 
I'm from 201 Beach Permanent Campus. Let's in it. I have customized my presentation in six different sections. The first section is welcoming and introducing. That's already done. The second section will be the idea about emerging technology for the revolution of industry 4.0. And in the third section, I will interpret in the main subjective thing of this presentation. I will describe there about cyber security and then there will be summary and before ending there will be question and answer section according to rules of this event i will give three minutes for this question answer section so the reminder is there will be time for question answer session i will be grateful if you could ask question or confusion at q a section of this presentation let's move on the next slide to knowing about the emerging technology for revolution of industry 4.0 Industry 4.0 described the growing trend towards automation and data extent in the technology and process within the manufacturing industry, including internet. Emerging industry 4.0 technology disrupting almost every industry worldwide. It is rapidly transforming how business finance coursing dramatic chances to resourcing capital and technology investments. This slide showing us some top technology trends of the fourth industrial revolution. Here the first is artificial intelligence and machine learning. The second is the Internet of Things, IoT. Here's also big data. Also there is the blockchain and in there is the cyber security. That gonna I'm talking today. Before I started about this emerging technology, I will first let you know actually what you will got from me after this presentation about cybersecurity. Some basic idea about cybersecurity and how it works. Actually, why need the cybersecurity? Some facts that you should know for awareness. Some statistics about the cybersecurity, like uh, most attacked area, most hackers from the area, etc., etc. Then I will explain the challenges of cyber security, and in the rest, I will say the strategy in Bangladesh about cyber security. Cyber security is the production of data and systems within networks that are connected to internet. It can be information security, can be information technology disaster recovery, can be information privacy. There are five basic working steps of cyber security: detect, respond recover identify and protect let's talk about the why cyber security need it's secure from cyber crime it helps in securing data from threats like in data thief or misuse it safeguards computer from virus to protect system computers data from attack damage and unauthorized access here are some facts about cyber security. There is a hacker attack in every 39 seconds. 43% of cyber attacks focus on the small business. Only 38% of global organization claim they are prepared to handle a sophisticated cyber attack. 160,000 Facebook accounts are compromised per day. This is the statistic part. The first are showing us top 10 countries affected targets attack. Here we are showing USA suffers from more cyber attack. India is second. And in the right, the pie chart showing us about percentage about hacker of a country. Here is China is top and second is USA. Third graph showing us cyber crime cases in Bangladesh. This is increasing day by day. The fourth graph showing us the type of stolen information from the company in a year. There we are showing the web-based companies in the main target and the social engineering attracts the second target of hackers. And in the bottom, this is the history of cyber crime. This slide showing us about the cyber security challenges in this revelation. The first is the user education. Users should know about cyber security. They should know how they can get help from it. The second is high profile information security strategy. The third is identity and access management. The fourth is unsecure personal device. And the fifth and last challenge is the governments over data security. So 
This is some law. According to IT Act 2000, in the section 43, taking data without permission is a crime. The tampering, hacking, and privacy leak, everything is included in cyber crime. We are almost stressed in our presentation. So we can't live without internet in this era. So you have to fight with the prevent and toxic thing with the wildlife like cybersecurity and explore more and more live in a healthy internet. As much as possible, I try to explain about the cybersecurity, figure out the significance of it and make it visible why it need and how you can get help from it. In this smart vision, you have to be also smart with the smart security and smart technology. Not just technology means the better tomorrow. Only the secure technology can provide us better tomorrow. And this industrial revelation 4.0 hardly dedicated to form from your security in internet. This is question and answer session. So if you anyone have any kind of question or confusion, you can ask comfortably. Uh, hello. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, can I take the opportunity to ask you a question? Hello? Yes. Hello, for technical problem, I didn't hear you. Can you please repeat? Dear sir, you can ask your question. So, Ms. Farhana, too much noise here because of the Azan. So, I think I will okay. skip this part. Uh, uh, am I audible? Uh, may I ask uh, some question to Farzana? You are welcome. Okay. Thank you, Farzana, for your nice presentation. I would like to ask you, we have already uh, talked about the challenges that are uh, currently facing by uh, cyber security in perspective of Bangladesh. So what can be the possible measure to overcome these challenges of cyber security in regard of our country? Uh, Farzana, you got the question? Okay, what will be the benefit of in our country, the cyber security or how it will work in this revelation uh, in our country, the this uh, cyber security did you mean it no i mean what will be the possible measure to overcome the challenges that are facing uh, for cyber security in our country what can be the possible measure to overcome the challenges okay so we have to be oh uh, we have to be our as a person first we have to be our and we'll welcome it our we have now uh, lots of law in bangladesh and we already lots of people know about it so we really they will be benefit from it <clears throat> may i ask a question more okay thank you farzana yes. okay uh, dear farzana thank you uh, for your wonderful presentation thank you, sir. I also uh, wanted to ask you the question which our Honorable Hadejavan uh, Shubha sir uh, has asked you. You have presented some challenges in your uh, presentation slide, but you did not show any prevention techniques. How we can prevent these cyber attacks? You have shown some cyber attacks there, and it will be very uh, helpful for the audiences if you could say something or if you could uh, uh, write in your slides about the prevention techniques. So I am uh, just, uh, I okay. know from you, uh, I want to know from you, uh, would you please explain what is firewall? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I don't know. And okay, okay. It's, it's okay. okay. It's okay. And so, but, uh, it will be very, very wonderful, uh, very wonderful. Okay. If you Can could, I explain why, uh, I didn't add that, why I didn't add the, actually the technique system? And because this is, from every department will come. And so this I didn't so deep, I didn't go so deep as everyone could understand this presentation. Presentation should easy so. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Fadzana. Thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. So, uh, so I think uh, there are no question. 
Assalamu alaikum hello everyone a uh, very good noon to all i am umekari moishi from 203 da id 20390201 department of csc basically this platform is new to me if i make a mistake please forgive me now i would like to talk about programming language if you have any question about my presentation they are honorable judges please ask me after completing my presentation okay now i started my discussion today's topic is emerging technology for the revolution of the industry 4.0 from this topic i am language for many reasons i believe that at present in technological world highly depends on programming then uh, at this stage i come to my today's content today's content is what is the current state of the industry why choose this programming topic what is the computer programming several types of programming and conclusion then uh, i come to my uh, next content uh, what is industry it's all about industry uh, an industry is a group of companies that are related based on their primary business activities and that causes revolution help us move forward nick bostrom said that we might define a technological revolution as a dramatic change brought about relatively quickly by the introduction of some new technology a revolution is the overthrow of current order in favor of something new and a technological revolution is the overthrow of current technology in favor of new technology Uh, the industry is developing gradually if we uh, look at the past we can see that uh, there has never been so much developed before but gradually uh, it has happened and new device merely opens a door it does not com uh, compel one to enter uh, in industry our technological revolution will happen and one technology will be replaced by another
uh, next content, uh, why programming? Uh, basically, uh, why I choose programming in spite of having so many options. As I said before, uh, I believe that it has role to play in everything. The role of uh, programming uh, in the industry, uh, programming play iOS role in many ways, in educational field, in business field, communication field, industrial field, etc. Basically, online platform based on programming. The most important technology in our comp uh, uh, is our computer. Its operating system depends on our pro programming. Used by us, uh, various applications, gaming apps, educational related apps, Zoom, the most popular apps in us, Facebook, which we use a lot in whole world, it also made by computer programming. Not only that, but also developer company, software field, machine learning, robotic, behind the everything is computer or programming. Then uh, next content, uh, what is computer programming? Today's base topic, programming language, what is it actually? A program is created uh, with a programming language and by a programmer. Program, what is program, what is programming language and what is programmer? Program, program is a set of step-by-step -step instruction that tells or uh, directs the co computer what to do. Programming language, programming language is a set of rules that tells the computer what to perform is through it. And last, programmer. Programmer is the person who designs and tests a program, also decide which of the programs or set of instruction to use. Uh, then uh, type of programming. Uh, levels of programming language. There are five levels of programming language used in their respective generation uh, each uh, generation is an improvement of the later generation. Is machine learning, assembly, uh, machine language, assembly language, high level language, very high level language, and natural language. Among them, uh, C++, C, C++, Python, Java, these are included them. Uh, at the end, we can say that uh, the whole world is moving forward by programming and it's bring, uh, bringing us closer to the whole world. Not only that, there are some upcoming revolution in the future, all, autom uh, all automation in our industry will happen. This will reduce our physical work, uh, physical work in the industry. Programming has created our online platform. Uh, this has reduced our, reduced our distance and increased our communication. It has caused a revolution in the field of education. Uh, we are getting all benefits online in this pandemic situation of Corona. There are so many business that are being uh, conducted via the web in present times. The most popular operating system Windows in our computer is made up of comp uh, programming. Also Ubuntu Linux operating system are included. And then, uh, so uh, all we can say programming plays a huge role in our industry. So uh, I'm ending my presentation here and thank you. Thank you. Uh, now our honorable judges, uh, please, uh, you may ask any question or make any suggestion to her. Okay, Umme Karima. And she is from the first semester. Okay, Umme Karima, am I audible to you? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. You said that because of the automation in the industry, uh, our physical uh, activities are becoming less, right? But in proportion to that, the number of population is increasing day by day. So how can you mitigate? How can you make a bridge between that? Uh, sir, uh, please repeat the question. Uh, OK, so I'm just rephrasing the question for you. Like you said that because of the uh, automation in the industry areas, our physical activities are uh, not needed that much in future, yes, but uh, from, uh, from uh, we can see that the population number of population is increasing worldwide, right? So what we are going to do with this number of huge number of uh, human resources? I mean, can we make a connection between the uh, AI? I mean, artificial intelligence or automation with the 
physical uh, abilities of human beings? So actually, I got it your question, but I can't to explain that. Sorry, sir. Okay, madam, okay. Uh, may, I, may, may I ask a question, ma'am? Sure, sir. Sure, sure. Okay. okay. This is uh, Ume Karima, I think. Yes, Very sir. appreciable that uh, uh, from your student ID, I came to know that you are studying in uh, only the first semester. You are a yes, very sir. new student, and, and I'm so shown, nervous sir, for that. Uh, yes, yes, it is. It is seen, and you have shown your enthusiasm to participate in this uh, uh, big uh, competition that will uh, that is happening now. So, uh, for being you are a uh, first semester student, you are already known about programming language, and uh, that's why you have chosen this topic uh, for your presentation. I think, right? Yes, sir. So uh, I, I, I uh, just only hear a simple answer from you that uh, regarding these programming languages, what is the backbone of any programming language? Can you share with us what is the backbone of uh, any programming language? Uh, sir, C language, the most popular. Uh, uh, this is a particular example. Okay. Okay. Can you explain about, uh, about what is meant by an algorithm? Uh, what is sorry. an algorithm? How an algorithm works? Sorry, sir, I can't. Okay, it's okay. okay. You are a first semester student. It's okay. It's okay. You can learn it uh, from your next semester studies. I think. Thank you very much uh, for your nice question. Am I audible? Yeah, sure. 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 Okay, um, Karima, you are from the first semester. I got to know. Uh, I just want to ask you a simple question. You have mentioned the operating system uh, in your slide, like Windows and Linux. So I want uh, to ask you, what are the purposes of operating system in, uh, in a computer? Why do we need it? Sir, uh, our computer, uh, uh, basically I used to uh, uh, any uh, operating system, Windows, to a Linux, so uh, that's why it's needed for us. No, no. Uh, why do why? we need it in the computer? What will happen if we don't have any operating system in our computer? Extremely Can we sorry, able to sir. operate it uh, without any operating system in the computer? Sir, I can't. Okay, thank you, Umar Karima. Uh, just one last uh, quick question, if I'm if I'm allowed. Okay, sir. Okay, uh, just a very general question to the first year student. First of all, congratulations to you. Uh, in your first year, you have it's it's actually your first semester, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, I just want to ask you. Uh, before starting your Bachelor of Science uh, degree, have you ever uh, learned about programming or any other programming language during school or college years? Uh, no, sir. Actually, uh, uh, not academically, but I uh, learning a language. Uh, okay, which which language did you learn? Uh, sir, primarily I uh, learning uh, Python and C. Oh, you learned about Python and C before starting uh, Bachelor of Science, right? Uh, yes, sir. But uh, it's uh, completely prime, uh, primarily, uh, not uh, okay. deep. Yes, so in, in your, in your uh, school or college studies, was programming language part of your academic studies? In, no, in, in sir. Class? No, no, sir. Okay. It's completely, uh, um, it's not okay. academically. So, yes, sir. so by your own interest, you learned about it, right? Yes, sir. I'm okay. so interested. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So thank you, and um, sorry. Okay. Uh, thanks, Karima. Now we can move to our next presenter, Muhammad Najmul Islam Khan. Please continue with your topic. Assalamu alaikum. 
We know our world is moving day by day, and this is possible only through technology. The role of technology in the industrial revolution is immense. Today, I'm going to discuss about the fourth industrial revolution by, you, by rising technology. I'm Muhammad Najmul Islam Khan from the Department of CEC, page 203. I'm so glad that I'm able to be a part of Green Innovative Virtual Presentation Competition 2020. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to present that. Here's some important content that I will focus on today. Now, let's get to the point. All the developed countries are getting ready for the fourth industrial revolution, which seeks to take the lives of the people of the world one step further. This change will improve the quality of life of all people, increase the income of, of all classes of people. Modern technologies such as robotics, machine learning, cloud computing, artificial intelligence, automation, and many other techni technological things will play an important role in the fourth industrial revolution. Now, the question may arise, why robotics for the revolution of industry 4.0? Well, basically robotics is a branch that discusses and researches everything related to robots. Since humans have to work within a certain time frame and the pace of their work is not always the same due to physical exhaustion. Robots can be human collaborators. For example, things that cannot do in many cases, robots can do these things for 24 hours. Various dangerous tasks with the help of computer controlled robots in the factory, for example, welding, carrying a heavy products, etc. And also robots can experiment with different types of micro circuits, which is not possible with human. And using this technology, modernization in economy and global civilization is possible. Now let's discuss robotics in detail. Robotics is a branch which revolves, which revolves around robots and that deals with the design, construction, operation, and applications of robots. It works for computer systems to control robots, sensors, feedback, and process information. Now let's look at the different types of robots in industrial cases. There's all types of robots able, can be able to take the world one step further. These are articulated robots, Cartesian robots, Kara robots, and the last one is Delta robots. Now first, look at the articulated robot. An articulated robot is the type of robot that comes to mind when most people think about robots. Flexibility, dexterity, and reach make articulated robots ideally suited for tasks. It is high speed and easy to line up on multiple plans. Uses of articulated robots in many different cases. Food packaging, material handling, pot welding, art welding, and many other industrial work can be possible by this robot. The second one is Cartesian robots. Cartesian robots are also called gentry robots and have a rectangular configuration. It can provide high positional accuracy, easy to program during offline also, and highly customizable. Some applications also we can see, and that is the uses of Cartesian robots. Peak and place operations, loading and unloading, material handling, assembly, and service assembly. And the, another industrial robot is Scara robot. Scara robots are lightweight and have small footprints, making them ideal for applications in crowded spaces. They are also capable of very fast cycle times. It has high speed, excellent level of repeatability and large workspace. Scara robots are usually used in many cases like assembly applications, semiconductor, wafers, handling, biomet applications, and also in packaging. Delta robots are also referred, Delta robots are also referred to as spider robots. It has very high speed, high operational accuracy, and many kinds of industries like food, pharmaceutical, and electronic places using these robots. 
Flight simulators are also uses these robots for simulations. In line with the world, Bangladesh is for far ahead in terms of technology, but still for some reason, Bangladesh is a little behind. We need to put more emphasis on those issues. That is how can we develop our technological side so that we can reach on the top level of the world. Robotics has a significant role in global economy and everyday life. The most pleasant point is that the young generations of Bangladesh have already proved their creativity for constructing multi-dimensional robots. But due to lack of adequate facilities and resources, many researchers are unable to run their research properly, losing thousands of probabilities. In this case, the lack of facilities and everything about research can be overcome by creating foundations for large organizations. And also the another issue is in our country, due to lack of proper knowledge about technology, no one has a real idea about that, especially in village side. So in that case, we need proper technical training. Thus technology can take our country one step further. In conclusion, I wanna say robots are useful in many ways. For instance, it boosts economy because businesses need to be efficient to keep up with the industry competition. Therefore, having robots helps business owners to be competitive because robots can do jobs better and faster than humans can. Robots can build a simple car, yet robots can platform every job. Today, robots roles include assisting research and industry Finally, as the technology improves, there will be new ways to use robots will, which will bring new hopes and new potentials. So that's all this topic. If you have any questions, please inform me. I'm ready for this. Okay, can I ask a question to Nazmul? Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, thank you uh, for your beautiful presentation. Nice job. And uh, can you just tell me the title of your presentation today? Emerging Technologies for the Fourth Industrial Revolution. Right, good. So can you just uh, tell me in brief, what are the elements of the Fourth Industrial Revolution or Industry 4.0? What do we call the Industry 4.0? Because we already have the things that you mentioned, right? We have the, the robotics, different types of robots in industries. We already have them in practice in the current industry worldwide. So what are the new things that are going to be introduced in industry 4.0? Can you tell me? Yes, sir. sir. We can create many kinds of different types of robots that will, uh, that will can use this in many, uh, many different, uh, many industries. And that will be the improvement of industries. Okay, uh, but uh, creating new types of uh, technology or new robots, uh, that's been something common from a very early, early time. But do you know specifically what type of improvements uh, are required to be involved in industry 4.0? Do you know that? Sir, sorry, sir, I don't know. Okay, thank you. Thank you yeah. for trying. May, and, uh, may, I, may I ask us some questions, uh, Mr. Sure, uh, sure, sir. Sir. Okay, again, I am I am very pleased to see that uh, you uh, also from uh, the first semester in our uh, department, from CS yes, department, sir. Green Minister Bangladesh. So it is uh, very amazing that you have participated uh, in this uh, platform uh, spontaneously and you have uh, uh, selected such a topic uh, that actually uh, we studied in the ending semesters of our course. So the yes, robotics sir. is very, uh, very uh, useful topic, I think. So I am uh, just uh, questioning you uh, from your this topic, robotics. Would you please just say, what is the brain of a robot? We all know for every element there is some brain, uh, whether it is actually yes, uh, exist or not. Uh, uh, the human brain is actually exist, but uh, in computer we can say the microprocessor is the brain, uh, uh, something like that. What is the brain of a robot? Can you tell us? The uh, robot is fully controlled by computer 
programming. Okay, but in the sense, uh, what is that? Uh, the, the answer is microcontroller. Okay, you will learn it from your next semesters, I think. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, don't worry about it. Uh, you, you have explained some industries uh, regarding uh, the uses of a robot. Uh, could you please tell us uh, 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 which industry has been highly used the robots so far? Which industry? Please name uh, a industry which has highly used the robots. Sorry, sir. I don't know about that. Okay, okay. It's okay. It's, okay. it's very fantastic. So, so uh, the, the answer of this question is the automobile. Uh, the robotics has been used highly uh, in automobile industries. So, thank, thank you, you very sir. much for participating. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, uh, uh, Nasmul, uh, this is Shaurabh Barua. I'm a lecturer from the Department of AAA. I'd like to recommend you something that I have uh, I have already heard that all the judges uh, ask some valuable questions to you. And if as you are in the first semester, I would like to uh, mention some of the names that can be that can become the acceleration uh, that can uh, accelerate the industrial 4.4.0 revolution in. Um, from the from the point of view of robotics, uh, you uh, recently some of my students have worked on some fire extinguishing robots uh, that will be deployed for for controlling the fire in the affected areas. And you may also work on uh, the ro Mar rover Mars rover projects uh, projects where uh, the robots will be built for the for sending in the Mars to collect some experimental data as well. And uh, you can also uh, work on some uh, automobile, uh, some robots which will be deployed in auto automobile sector in the next coming years. And yes, uh, some humanoid robots as well, which will be used to uh, rescue the humans in, uh, from, uh, from any disastrous uh, or disastrous from any disastrous situation. So that will be some robots that will uh, help you to, uh, to, that will help you in accomplishing your final year project. Thank you. This, thank you so much for your solution. Thank you so much for hearing and giving you valuable time. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, so thank you very much. Now I would like to invite our next presenter, Muhammad Najmul. Uh, Muhammad Najmul Hussein from two zero one batch. Yes, sir. Oh, no, Nazmul, sir. We have three Nazmul today. Oh, thank you. This Nazmul is from CAC department, sir. And he is uh, from 201 batch. Hold on. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please continue. Assalamu alaikum, everyone, and thank you so much, ma'am, for giving me this opportunity. Please share your screen. Sure. Good afternoon, dear audience. This is Mohammed Nazbul Hussain, a student of Green University of Bangladesh in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering. Today, I'm here to share some of my ideas about fourth industrial revolution. My presentation is divided into five parts. At first, I will give you some overviews on some of the creative innovations happened in this era of fourth industrial revolution. Next, I will discuss about our route to future journey of technological improvement. And we will have a glimpse on some legitimate history of revolution. Then I will give you some ideas on potential implementation of industry 4.0 technologies. After this, I will briefly discuss about IoT, the technology we got from the revolution Industry Revolution 4.0. And lastly, I will discuss about some of the benefit of technological advancement of this industrial revolution. So let's begin. According to JSP market research, the technologies underlying industrial revolution 4.0 includes the fusion of IT in the form of cognitive computing, cloud computing, and the industrial IoT to enable cyber physical systems. 
mainly cyber physical system deals with automation and analyze all the information we got from the centralized network and apply it to the physical process so that we uh, so that uh, the working process be much more efficient and the product uh, and the production time may decrease noticeably we all know romans didn't build rome in a day like the same our today's world worked a long way to hit this milestone in the year before 1784 people didn't even know what is machine by the first industrial revolution people got introduced with mechanization steam power and so on but there was no concept for mass production somewhere in around the year 1870 the owner of ford motors mr henry ford went to a butcher shop to buy some meat there he saw them cutting all those pigs in a disciplinary way like one after one and each of the tasks were being allocated to individual persons separately. He named this process as assembly line and implemented this idea into his car factory. This is how the first, the second industrial revolution began. And in the year 1969, we got introduced with the third industrial revolution. It brought a revolutionary change to 90s world. On that era, we got our first automation technology computing and electronic devices. And today is the day to change the future because now we have the most advanced technologies ever. We have developed cyber physical systems, strong mobile network, and we have developed IOT to control entire factory facilities along with our home, lab, home appliances. And we call this space as industry 4.0. Here is some of the potential implementation of Industry 4.0 technologies. We have developed IoT. We use robot to increase productivity. We developed artificial intelligence with the help of predictive maintenance. Robot helps us manufacturing complex parts. Now we can use machine as service. We got huge data to control quality. We have ser we have several platform for production line simulation. Let's have some idea about IoT technology. The IoT describes a network of physical objects that are built with sensors, software, and other technologies for the purpose of connecting and exchanging data between devices and systems over the internet. By using this kind of technology nowadays, we not only can control our home appliances, but also we can control and monitor or enter factory facilities and production lines. And it requires nearly zero human involvement. Undoubtedly, the technologies we got from fourth industrial revolution are blazing for us. Now we can read customers thought, handle compliances easier than before, work flexibly to improvise efficiency that we can maximize the productivity the technologies of fourth industrial revolution is highly cost efficient and low risk factor. That's why anyone can afford it to ex experience the goodness of future technology. Long story short, industrial revolution is the process of automation with traditional devices using smart technologies. We are in the age of my presentation. Please feel free to ask if any question raised. Question and answer session is open for Najmul. We can uh, take any question from audience too. Okay, uh, Najmul, I'm a, yes, sure up, sir. Go ahead, please. No, sir, so come, sir, you please first, <laughs> then I will ask my question. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, Najmul, a very wonderful presentation. I like your slides. Uh, my question is, what skills are required to implement this emerging technology in our perspectives, in our perspectives? So actually, uh, if, you, if you want to implement the emerging technology or adopt emerging technology, first of all, we need to, uh, we need to be aware about all this technology we have, implemented, we have developed. And then uh, uh, we need to know how to use this properly. And uh, we need a little bit 
technological skill to use and uh, drive all this equipment. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Nasbul, I have a question to you that uh, you have explained the uh, the uh, opportunities of IoT in next income, uh, next upcoming industry 4.0 revolution. Uh, uh, do you know about Raspberry Pi, uh, which is uh, already been used in IoT applications? Yes, I know. Okay, so uh, will you please explain me that how Raspberry Pi uh, can improve the IoT based devices? So as far I know, IoT, uh, sorry, as far I know, the Raspberry Pi is a one kind of CPU. Okay. So uh, we can input uh, our command as we, uh, we can input our command, uh, what we want to do with these devices. And uh, if you plug the, uh, if you plug some of the sensors and devices uh, compatible with this uh, Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi will perform, uh, perform and uh, instruct those devices to run properly as per our instruction. Okay, so, so, uh, Raspberry, uh, so Pi the Raspberry Pi response is better than microcontroller, microprocessor? What is your opinion? Sorry, it depends on the scenario actually. What kind of a microcontroller or what kind of microprocessor we are using and uh, some in some plat uh, platform, Raspberry Pi is not uh, that good as the microprocessor and the uh, scenario changes uh, the when the platform change actually okay in most okay. cases thank say... okay thank you okay, um, uh, i have a question to mr uh, mohammed nazmul hussain uh, sure, can i ask okay so since you are uh, presenting your uh, presentation slide uh, on iot that is internet of thing my first question is uh, have you familiar uh, with uh, the term Internet of Everything, that is IOE? Yes, sir. Have you heard the term Internet of Everything? Sir, Internet so, of uh, Everything. So can you please explain us uh, uh, what is the difference between IOT? Yes. So actually, IOT is the term uh, which is the full meaning of uh, Internet of Things. So, uh, in using this term, we can we can connect our device, our existing old model devices to our uh, our newly designed mod, uh, network model. But Internet of Everything is stand for the Internet of every single devices. Like uh, like we can uh, use this as example as the Apple ecosystem. So there is an ecosystem like uh, from toothbrush to uh, shoes. Each and everything is connected to uh, a network, so uh, we can uh, we can collect all the information from uh, our daily drives and daily uh, accessories we are using. So all the information uh, and uh, we are analyzing all the information. We can uh, we can collect and measure our uh, uh, health. Okay. Sorry, health. I issue. got it. I got it. Thank you, Nazmul. Uh, so uh, I want another uh, question. I want to say, uh, would you please uh, name some popular companies uh, which are uh, working on Internet of Things? Sir, as far as I know, Internet of Things, uh, Amazon Alexa, then uh, Microsoft uh, is currently working uh, good, and Apple and Google are the, uh, in, are in the leading board right now, as far as I know. And somewhere, the Siemens is uh, trying to be. What about Philips or LG in your opinion? So actually, they are. What also about being... Philips or so, LG or Samsung? So they are currently uh, working on digitalize the platform or uh, digital, uh, modernize the uh, electrical or electronics equipment. But uh, as far I know, there has no uh, ecosystem to connect all those in uh, all those information or all those devices to into one place which uh, apple or google has okay thank you uh, thank uh, thank you Nazmul. Uh, that's all from my side thank you for your wonderful and nice presentation thank you, sir. 
thank you. I can see and hand is raised from the audience. Shajib Bishesh Untu, have you any question? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I have a question. Uh, okay. First of all, uh, Nazmul, uh, your slide was wonderful. Okay, uh, and like uh, I have a question, which is uh, you have uh, uh, you have described the industry one, two, three, and lastly industry four point oh. So I have uh, my question is uh, what are, what is our current competency versus uh, the industrial four point oh? Like what kind of challenges we are facing? Uh, implementing all those uh, technologies that you have shown, like IoT, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and all these things. Uh, as I said in my presentation, uh, we can uh, sorry, we can convert to uh, industry four point. Oh, we can add up into industry four point oh by using our existing devices also. So there is a here is a challenge. Like if we are using our old model devices, then uh, what is the way to connect them all the to a internet or a platform? This is the only challenge. So by this time, uh, what we can do? Uh, what we need to do is we need a device that will be plugged into our uh, existing system and that will send a information or send a data to our logic unit or the CPU. In the CPU we will send is uh, send those command to our existing devices. Then this device will all automatically perform as the automation and next level automation that um, which doesn't need to require any human involvement. This is the way actually. Actually, I was I was looking for uh, generally what's our current competency versus uh, the four industry 4.0. Uh, as for my assumption, our current competency is the knowledge about 4.0 because uh, most of the people are not familiar with this term. So people are not aware about um, that. Uh, we, can, uh, we can easily transform our old fashioned uh, technologies to 4.0 just uh, by changing some of the devices only. People thinking like 4.0 is the uh, mo most and highly expensive term. This is the actual problem. Okay, thank you, all the best. Okay. And thank you so much, everyone, for your patience. Uh, thank you. Uh, now I am inviting uh, the next presenter, Muhammad Robin Hussain. Yes, ma'am. After his presentation, there are uh, two presenters are remaining. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Robin Hussain. Now I introduce, uh, presented by presenter top topic is emerging technology of industry 4.0 let's start now we are standing 4.0 industrial revolutions it main focus in ai robotics 3d printer etc as well as link all of those uh, in my like in my presentations i will, would describe the ai robotics and 3d printers now we look about the history of revolutions. It is not the first revolutions. It is the fourth revolutions. The first revolution is Steve Engel. Uh, you can see in the picture, first picture is Steve Engel. And the second rev uh, first revolution is started from 1716. And the second revolution is electricity. It gives us a new hope in our uh, revolutions that uh, it, it started from 1817 and the uh, Third revolution is computer and internet. It is called also digital uh, revolutions. Uh, it gives a new move also in it. And you can see the picture. You can have a knowledge about the revolutions uh, that gives us the 4.0, some knowledge about it. Now we are talking about the artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, uh, in a simple terms, uh, human think and we like to uh, work like or we like to work the robot like a human it is called a artificial intelligence and you can uh, i wrote some word in it artificial intelligence refer to a simulating of human intelligence in machine that programs to think like human artificial intelligence is used many sector in our in the world like healthcare finance uh, transports retailers and you can see uh, artificial intelligence uh, is growing more 
and big that uh, in the in the industry the in the technology world man in bangladesh the uh, automobiles uh, driving or artificial drivers uh, yeah, cars truck uh, you, uh, you cannot use the driver you can uh, or uh, direct the computer uh, direct the computer it, it can also work like that and the robotics robotics is a branch of engineering it is a field of overlap with electrics computer science and nanotechnology bioengineering in the robotics sectors is a big sectors uh, in bangladesh uh, it is not a big sector but uh, um, um, uh, because we are a developing country we are used in this robotic sites and we use it and um, improving our technology and uh, you can uh, some example that uh, walchon mobile company and others they are exporting and collecting the uh, things and uh, uh, in bangladesh uh, symphony the mobile company you can see that they are developing and they um, create they creating something that uh, benefit our it benefit bangladesh by uh, as a informant technology and third the 3d printer 3d printer is a it makes to possible to produce prototypes and much faster than the manufacturing company uh, 3d printing printer is a physical object that 3d thing uh, by we uh, we can create it and we i like to introduce uh, mostly i like to share that the aerospace uh, parts and the dental and the optical products slight is uh, change of human life you can see the picture the the mobile smartphones and the laptop and hu uh, and human is uh, uh, watching it uh, we can assume by the picture that from the government to e-commerce from the education to healthcare it is meant impacting human values opportunities relationships identity by the modifying uh, virtual as well as the world of human beings uh, in the uh, industry 4 point revolution is main focus in the human benefit benefit how can uh, technology benefit human and human can develop the human can develop their skill to to improve the environment as well as the uh, condition of financials in the world thank you all for for giving my giving me an opportunity to present my uh, uh, presentations have any questions about my topics okay robin uh, first of all uh, congratulations to you for participating in this competition and uh, I'd just like to uh, suggest to you that you are presenting uh, in a competition where uh, students and faculty members from different departments are watching your presentation. So from the next time, be very careful about uh, very simple mistakes like spelling mistakes. For instance, in your title page, uh, the spelling of university and also our, the name of our country is wrong. This is, uh, this is actually quite shocking. So I think from the next time, Please try to keep your focus on these issues, okay? Okay, sir, okay, sir. Okay, may I ask a question, ma'am? Sure, sir. Uh, Mohammed Robin Hassan. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, uh, I, experiencing, I, I, I am experiencing that you are very nervous today. Uh, so, uh, Asif, sir, has guided you. Uh, how about your you can remove your nervousness. So I am uh, questioning you from that topic you have uh, 
shown and presented to us that is the artificial intelligence so uh, would yes, you uh, please tell us the, what is the agent in uh, an artificial intelligence system sir could you repeat in the question what is an agent what do you mean by an agent in artificial intelligence Okay, I think so, I sorry, think this sir. is a very uh, complex topic, and you are studying in uh, third semester right now. I think so. Uh, you yes, you have chosen uh, so many uh, so complex topic. So I can uh, I can ask you. Uh, uh, I want to ask you another question. Uh, what is yes, the uh, what are the most popular programming languages which are used in AI? Can you tell us some names of the programming languages? C programming, C programming JavaScript. Uh, okay. Any other programming language? C programming is uh, uh, used in AI. Is it right? Not have any idea, sir. Okay. Okay. It's okay. Uh, you will learn okay. it from your next semester, I think. Uh, thank you. Thank you for participating. Uh, that's all from my side. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So thank you. Now I am inviting next presenter, Shami Muhammad Rakib, to present his topic, please. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my presentation. I'm Shami Muhammad, Department of CSC from Green University of Bangladesh. The title for our presentation is Emerging Technology for the Revolution of Industry 4.0. The topic that I choose from that is cybersecurity. Everything that we are going to talk about today. First of all, we will talk about what is cybersecurity. Why should we know about cybersecurity? Cyber threat, a step to fix a crime, how we can protect ourselves from cyber attacks. And the last, we have a Q&A session. If there's something that come on your mind, please save those for our Q&A session. So let's move on. First of all, we have cybersecurity. What is the cybersecurity? As we know, we are living in the digital era. So cybersecurity is very important thing for us. Cybersecurity is actually that protect our data and make our internet life safe. Why we should know about cybersecurity? As you can see in my slide, there are a lot of multinational companies like Facebook, Yahoo, has been targeted from cyber attack for a many, many times and also been continuously targeted. Now we'll talk about the cyber threat. What are the cyber threat are? There are eight type of cyber threat. First of all, we'll talk about malwares. What is malware? Malware is an all-encompassing threat where including virus and a lot of things that are actually defined a code that are downloaded in our system and then store our every data. Then I have the phishing attack. What is coming on, on your mind by hearing that name? Yes, the word of trap, isn't it? Yes, exactly it was. Her and the hacker sent a lot of fake spam mails and lot of things or fake SMS. And if you access on them or them, then your all data will be goes to them. Then we have password data. When the third party or the hacker crack your password and access all your system, then we have DDoS. DDoS is actually used for let the server down when the hacker sent a lot of or huge volume of data and overloaded the server and let the server down. Then we have the man in middle. What the thing that come in your mind? Yes, exactly it is. When the hacker connect with you like an authority and make you believe that he is the actual authority. But in real, he was a fake and connect with you, then collect your data and destroy your life. Then we have drive-by download attack. 
Hi, actually it's similar like Malware, but in here we haven't download those codes. Where if we visit a site or effect a site, then the codes are automatically downloaded in our system and make or keep our or install our data. Then we have malware where actually we have those virus or those ad. If we click on those ad, our data will be stolen. Then we have rock software, where actually if you think that we also use a lot of free antivirus, those are not actually free. Free things are never good for us. Where the rock software are the fake antivirus that are have on the internet. If we use them, then they will use us by using or stolen our data. Now we'll talk about the step to fix a crime. First of all, we have to understand where we have been attacked. That's called identify. Then we have to analyze and evaluate that thing and then comes to the treatment. Now we'll talk about how we can protect ourselves from being attacked. First of all, we have to be very careful about our internet life. Didn't click on those links or the attachment, we are not coming from the actual authority. We have to install our software as soon as possible and make sure all are upgraded. Also install the antivirus and make sure those are not the theory and those are actually the few antivirus are. Then we have to make always the backup for our important things. Is there anything that coming on your mind Please feel free to ask me. Hello, anything? Thank you, Shamim. Uh, now I question and answer. Okay, okay, like okay sir. Ask a question. Uh, uh, dear Sami Muhammad. Yes, sir. Do you have any idea about Trojan horse? What, sir? I couldn't. Trojan hear. horse. No, sir. For right that moment, I didn't know about that much about it. Oh, in case of in case of violation of the cyber security, have there any laws in Bangladesh to protect the cyber security in Bangladesh? Yes, sir. There are a lot of law uh, has been included recently, and for protect ourselves. Uh, please, please mention the laws. Name of the laws. Mm, there are. Actually, sir, at that moment, those laws or the name of those laws aren't coming on my mind. Thank you. My last question is, what is email spoofing? Yes, sir. Email spoofing. Hello. Yes, sir. Email spoofing. Do you have any idea in respect of email spoofing? The fake email that comes from the ARN authority. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ahmed. Thank you, sir. Uh, Shamim, may I ask you a question? Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes sir, please. Okay, Shamim, you have already discussed about uh, various cyber attacks, like uh, someone can penetrate some uh, false in information during transmission uh, uh, between two networks. Uh, but while you are talking about the measures that we should uh, have been taken uh, to uh, prevent this kind of attack, you have just discussed about don't uh, click in an unauthorized link or many other things. But I want to know how can we prevent this kind of attack, like uh, penetrating some false in information during a transmission between two networks. Do you have any idea about this? So can you repeat it again? I okay, that a specific point is how can we prevent someone from penetrating any false information between oh. two transmission network. Okay, sir. Actually, you're saying about that how we can, I mean, how we can realize the fake emails or fake things or the which are the actual the truth. First of all, we have to be careful about everything that come on our mail or from our internet. We have to make sure that all are truth. Uh, we can watch those links and read those address and that if those are fake there would be would be some 
placement or okay, some let me or... make it easy for you for example suppose uh, uh, you and your friends are talking over the phone and someone some another user are uh, pushing some uh, false in information between uh, the transmission of you and your friend so what can we uh, do in this regard okay sir for for on for type of situation we have connected with my friend very surely and we have to know the things or the form about clearly and that's that's the way i think so we will study in this topic and we will have some knowledge about this thank you sir thank you for your advice uh, i have a question to mr shamim ahmed yes sir uh, the topic uh, which has, uh, you have presented to us is a very fantastic topic and very uh, depth knowledge is required to uh, present something like this and uh, since you are first year student it is really tough to you but uh, i appreciate all of your uh, enthusiasm to participate uh, participate in this uh, competition so okay. only one question from my side would you please explain what is cryptography regarding cyber, cyber security what is cryptography Mm, sir, actually, I, okay, I, okay, you have not studied uh, so much. Uh, yes, sir. You already uh, you understand it. Okay, thank you, thank you, Shami. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> At last, we can hear some claps. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> okay. Um, now i am inviting our last presenter sara to present her topic please she is the last presenter of today's competition thank you ma'am point zero there are many branches of emerging technologies uh, for the revolution of industry 4.0 uh, like autonomous robots uh, the cloud computing artificial intelligence and so on today i will talk about autonomous robots i have divided the content of autonomous robot into four part first of all what is autonomous robot and uses of autonomous robot and the self maintenance of autonomous robot and last sensing the environment first of all we have to know what is autonomous robot we can uh, also call a autonomous robot auto robot or auto bot an autonomous robot performs its tasks with high degree of autonomy high degree of autonomy means that its work perception is very high high with high degree of autonomy without external influence and uh, autonomous robot is subfield of artificial intelligence robotics and information engineering now about the uses of autonomous robot uh, we use autonomous robot in space flight household maintenance and waste water plants and transferring goods now what about self maintenance a uh, self maintenance is very important for an autonomous robot uh, because if it want to work perfectly it should maintain itself properly uh, we can uh, see a, a robot toy which can change its battery itself and it's the robot is known as sony io robot and here we can see a word proprioception what proprioception means that uh sensing one's own internal status uh, so a auto robot can perform it tasks very smartly if it can maintain itself now what about the sensing the environment 
to work more perfectly it should sense the environment it should sense the environment properly otherwise it cannot work perfectly uh, it can uh, sensing what is the sensing sensation part uh, sound to see something and can touch and touch and feel something do you have any question from my presentation you can ask me hello her question and answer session is open anyone can ask any question so i think so, madam uh, uh, i have okay. a question i have a okay, question sir. to uh, sara yes sir uh, uh, in your uh, first of all i want to in this platform and since you are uh, a second semester student uh, uh, it is very tough to you well, we know that the uh, robotics is very complex thing and first my first question uh, to you is what is the between uh, robotics or robots or, or and autonomous robots in your slide you have presented the autonomous robots so is there any yes, difference sir. between autonomous robot and robot are uh, all the robots are autonomous robots or is there any difference yes sir auto robot can work uh, with its own uh, sensation and its uh, sensation parts and it can maintain itself but we if we can see other robots uh, uh, some robots are make for its specific works uh, so that it can works only the this specific task uh, otherwise it cannot do other things and uh, sometimes we have to change their their battery and uh, uh man needs to change their batteries and uh, <coughs> maintain their technical parts but auto robot can maintain uh, themselves and repair itself and change their battery own self right. absolutely right uh, i uh, want to ask you uh, another question the very basic question i think the, uh, yes, what sir. is the law of uh, any robot what is the uh, basic law the backbone of any robot uh, we have the newton's law in uh, physics in uh, so there are some laws about robotics yes sir have you known the laws of robotics yes sir yes sir would you explain uh, yeah. yes sir um a robot sir follow a uh, three rules sir three laws uh, okay explain uh it cannot harm a human uh, through its interaction and allow a human to um, uh, but a human can harm the robot but it cannot harm to a robot and uh, a robot must obey the orders that given to it and it cannot work uh, other things which is not ordered to it and another is uh, so i can okay okay i i think uh, you are yes uh, yes there's a follow up uh, to end this job today okay thank you uh, suleman sir uh, just as a follow up to your question i'd like to ask the presenter do you know who who first proposed these three laws this three laws sir yes yes sir asimovs asimovs who who was asimov was he a scientist or uh, do you know his his um, identity no sir i didn't study so deep sir <laughs> okay thank you Actually, just for your information, Isaac Asimov was one of the most famous science fiction writers. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Asif, sir, for your kind information. So, thank you, Sara. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, everybody.
dear judges for your kind information actually we missed the question and answer session for our first presenter mohammad saifuddin and he is the only presenter from tripoli department so if you permit we can um uh, we can request saifuddin to show his uh, ppt uh, document again for uh, question and answer session Saifuddin Khandakar presented uh, power electronics, right? Yes, sir. Okay, we can. Mama uh, Saifuddin, can you hear us? Can you give me one minute, please? Okay. I think uh, we we've already seen his presentation. So, if anyone wants to ask any question from his topic, uh, he can ask. I think. Are you on yes, sir. If to permit, can I ask one question? Yes, sir. Sure. Okay. So I I have seen his presentation. It was good, but also uh, I was surprised that there was no question session at that time. Anyway, Actually, sir, our mistake was there. No problem. So I am I I also wrote that question. That's why I can ask now again. Okay. Uh, so my question is how nuclear element can generate power? Because Mr. Saifuddin, you have shown example that nuclear element can generate power could you please explain that how this nuclear element can generate power sir sir again sir please no you have uh, shown that there are several way to generate power and one of the way was uh, by nuclear element my question is how a nuclear element can generate power So actually, nuclear energy can um, used to create energy, but it must uh, first be re released from the atom in the process of nuclear fission. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. It's the right question. Okay, I have a question for Saifuddin. Yes, uh, Saifuddin, uh, one of the key areas of improvement for um, for the industry 4.0 or the uh, new industrial revolution is renewable energy. So we are focusing on solar power, like you said, nuclear energy. So what is the role of power electronics in say solar power or other forms of renewable energy? Sir, main question ta. Uh, question is, what is the role of power electronics? You, your topic was power electronics, right? So how can power yes, electronics sir. contribute to uh, renewable energy like solar power or wind power? Is there any use of uh, power electronics in these, in these sectors? Actually, uh, power electronics um, technologies for solar grid integration. Uh, sorry, sir. Okay. I noted your question. Okay. But, sorry, sir. I just want to share something about uh, Saifuddin Khandokar's topic, power electronics. Uh, if I wrong, anyone can suggest me the right way. Uh, in uh, the presentation of Saifuddin Khandakar slides, uh, he uh, showed us that uh, without power, nothing, no devices will uh, actually work. And we uh, all uh, know that, that if we have any mobile, and Saifuddin Khandakar has already told us that if we have any mobile or any computer, any laptop, without power connection or without battery, uh, the devices is dead, or we cannot uh, work uh, our daily life works using these devices without uh, with dead battery. So my uh, question is, uh, we, would, will we need uh, any uh, power electronics to generate power or generate the batteries or uh, for charging the, uh, these elements, these electronic elements? Will we need any power? Sorry. And how that power is yeah. generated without using any power uh, electronics elements? Sir, actually, I uh, I want to mm -hmm. I want to say. Um, 
So I say that uh, turn on the lights of of your rooms and uh, send the messages. So you asked me that uh, period. Mm. Sir, your question, I, I, I can understand that. Your topic is very interesting. I ask you the question that uh, without any power or without uh, any battery power, we cannot use our mobile, right? Yes, sir. So uh, we have to uh, charge our battery using power electrons. Yes, My question is that for uh, the using of, uh, for using this power electronics, do we need any power electronics in the back, back end for generating that power? I'm sorry, sir. Okay, okay, it's okay. It's, it's absolutely okay. Thank you very much for your presentation. So thank you, Najmul and Maria. Now you can go to your next session. We're almost in the rest of this Greenovative Virtual Presentation Competition 2020 PC events. Thanks a lot, dear Jazz, for your patience and support. Your immeasurable important advice will be help us on our next step. This program was interestingly educative. Our every participant performed fabulous, but to get final result announcement, we have to wait till 10th January, 2021. As you well know, our computer club of permanent campus is going to arrange a quiz competition for HSE students. Our announcement will happen with that ceremony combinedly. Now, I would like to request our Honorable Campus Director, Mrs. Umme Ruman, ma'am, to place her valuable comments. Please, ma'am. Okay, thank you, Maria. My dear colleagues and beloved students, Assalamu alaikum and very good evening. I think it was a remarkable and knowledgeable presentation of the pandemic year 2020. I would like to promise you that in the coming year, we will organize such type of events which will be very effective and more innovative to your respective fields. And I would like to a special thanks to Farhana Sani and the respected faculty members of our JAS panel. Thanks to all faculty members and club members of CSE and Tripoli who has organized this nice competition. Thanks to all participants for your marvelous presentation and audience for your patience. Uh, already Maria announced the 10th January will, uh, we will be announced your position of today's competition and your prize money will be distributed as soon as possible. Thank you all. Uh, Thank you so much, friend, for your inspiring speech. We got a lot of things to learn, which will help us to improvise ourselves, future in Shirley. As we have done all our formalities related to this glorious event, dear Ome Roman ma'am, we are seeking your permission to bring a closer to it. Uh, okay, thank you, Anas Moon. Uh, may I request to all the participants uh, and my dear students, uh, uh, please, you may leave. Uh, except our just panel, uh, please give some time uh, for our discussion. Uh, so all of the students, please may leave.